Um, and I think it's interesting to talk about why they have nuclear weapons. So, for example... Mm -hmm. Is in North Korea also having nuclear weapons? We'll talk about that, yeah. I think at this point, we would say, yes, they have nuclear weapons. They've done some tests, and the explosions look like they're big enough that they're nuclear... It's not just a mountain packed full of normal explosives. It's it's definitely nuclear. Oh, okay. But it's like small stock, like one or three or something like that. Yeah, it'll be... We don't know exactly how many they have. It could be 10, it could be 30, something like that. Enough, <laughs> right? <laughs> Enough. Yeah, of course. You just need one. <laughs> a couple of small ones is... Yeah, it makes a statement. Yep. All right, so let's talk about why. Like, why did each of these countries decide we need nuclear weapons? So the United States, why did America start its nuclear program? Well, I guess it, it had to do with the Second World War. There were all, all the countries involved in the Second World War were researching different ways to end the end the war faster by having a technological advantage. The Nazis has the the B-2 rockets against the, the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, so they needed to develop something that would be a deterrent. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What I know about it is that, for example, the Americans, before the nuclear weapons, they did have the most successful bombings of all times which were uh, incendiary weapons and they killed more civilians than the two nuclear bombs what do you mean by incendiary oh they were weapons made uh, to be they would burn basically yeah to start a fire they would not necessarily start a fire they would create fire they would be the fire mm -hmm. so these things, I, I don't know how they were called. I don't remember the name. But to my small knowledge about these things, they killed actually more people than the two nuclear weapons used in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah, so the United States were using, we could say, like firebombs on Japan. And they firebombed, uh, some, some people say, like, 80 to 90 percent of a lot of the big cities in Japan. Yeah, they, they were already bombing with really effective, let's call it like this, although it's really sad, but really affecting ways of destruction. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so America started this nuclear pro program because the Nazis had already started theirs. So as a reaction to this German uh, nuclear program. Yep. The Germans had a lot of really good nuclear scientists. And so in the beginning, they were ahead. But the United States, um, they, they bombed some of the, the factories. Facilities. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Some of the plants where the Germans were building this. So really, the Germans didn't get that far. And the other thing is that they also kidnapped some of the scientists working in these projects. The Americans? Yes. And the Russians. And the Russians. So, it, well, sometimes it was kidnapping. Sometimes it was that the other guys saw that the Americans were a better choice mm -hmm. and safer for research. So they just went to America. And some went before the Nazi grew, grew up really powerful. Mm. So... Yeah, a lot of, uh, not a lot, some of the nuclear scientists were Jewish. So they had a strong reason to leave the German nuclear program and to help the Americans. Yep. Okay, so America has nuclear weapons. Next was the Soviet Union. Why did they develop nuclear weapons? Well, I, I, I guess after World War II, when they decided to split the world into two factions, basically, uh, in, in Berlin. Mm -hmm. Communist and capitalist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, com communism and capitalism groups. They wanted to be ready because they were both aggressive in their war behaviors. They were not pacifists at all. After World War II, they were not about peace. They, they knew 
that war worked for their economies to lift up their both economies. So they wanted to have the better technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know Russia was is very close to Japan. They're basically neighbors, and they just watched their neighbor get bombed by America. So I can completely understand why Russia and the Soviet Union decided we need one of those two to keep ourselves safe. Completely makes sense to me. Yeah, I, I have never thought it about that way. I, I, I only thought it in the like weapons innovation mm. or weapons race. Uh, like science and industry and economy. Mm. Not necessarily. Well, yeah, but uh, the more is like the better my weapons, the better the chance that if they attack me, I will be able to defend myself. Yeah, or if they know that I have weapons, they will never attack me. And that's a lot of the idea. I guess that came later on. But first it was like developing the technologies. Like, let's build a, fastest ro a faster rocket. Let's build a, a rocket that goes further into enemy territory. So I guess that it was more the technology of war to be a, not necessarily a deterrent at the first stage what for me it was at the first stage it was an aggressive behavior towards each other you know it's like if i see some hostility i will be able to attack longer i will be able to attack uh, a wider area i will be able so okay so next was great britain united kingdom why did they get nuclear weapons i guess as part of the we are the victors of the war and russia becomes the enemy mm -hmm. And we need to defend ourselves from the Russians. Mm -hmm. And America is too far away. They will yeah. not be able to react on time in case they nuke us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And so France followed for very similar reasons. They, were, they won the war. They want to make sure they can defend themselves if anything happens again in the future. Okay, and so after... Great Britain and France was China. Why did China need nuclear weapons? Oh, because China was, for me, I think China was never part of the Russian allies. They, they are allies in a way, up to this day. Yeah, they're friends, but... But they have never really trusted each other. Hmm, yeah. So China is against two fronts for me. Mm -hmm. China is the same as Japan. If he was after the war, Japan became basically subordinate to the states. What does that mean? Uh, that basically all, all all they wanted to do had to pass by the U.S. Yeah, they need approval first. Yeah. It, it didn't become a problem for them because the U.S. was not going to attack them and Russia was not going to attack them because there was nothing to attack in a way. But China was a prosperous economy. And they just had a successful revolution. They wanted to make sure that they could protect that revolution from these capitalist countries that might come and try to stop the revolution. Korea and Japan, they're full of American soldiers. Um, that makes sense too, that China would feel uh, threatened by the Americans on one side, maybe threatened by Russia on the other side. So basically, everybody was threatening their territory. For me, China was like, I have all fronts. Russia only has one front because the Americans can only reach Russia by one side, especially Moscow. They cannot reach Moscow from the US, from the United States as long as I know. Mm, but Alaska's on the other side. So I think they did feel pretty threatened on two Oh, fronts. yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And then there were American weapons in Turkey, so even on their southern border, yeah. Okay, so these five countries are pretty important. The United States, Soviet Union, Great Britain, France, and China. Um, what's the connection between these five countries? They're the first ones to develop nuclear weapons, and anything They're the else? first ones who grow really powerful in economies. Mm -hmm. They were the winners of the war, in a way. Something about the United Nations. Oh, and they also were part of the United Nations founding group, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So the Security Council, uh, the main decision-making group in the United Nations, they have five members with veto power. And those are the five members. If you ever wondered why, like, why does France get veto power? Well, because they have nuclear weapons. And they had them at the time that this group was created. Oh, so that's why the people who had uh, had nuclear weapons were the ones deciding for the rest of us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so to make these five countries um, agree to join this group, they had to offer them some power in exchange. So that's what they did. They gave them all veto power. All right. But next after China, India got nuclear weapons. Why? I guess because it was still kind of a, of a colony from the UK. Hmm. So. Interesting. Well, India and China have had some disagreements in the past. So when China got nuclear weapons, India said, oh, wait a second. No, we need those two now. So they developed their own program. Mm -hmm. And after India, of course, came Pakistan. Pakistan and India are still fighting over Kashmir and that uh, the border they share. Um, so if India has nuclear weapons, Pakistan needs nuclear weapons. So that's the problem with with any country getting nuclear weapons. There's going to be this this waterfall effect where all of the neighbors feel like they need them as well. Um, so trying to limit the number of nuclear weapons countries um, has been really difficult over the years. And then there's North Korea. So North Korea... We're sure they have nuclear weapons now. And they just tested an ICBM. That's a fancy name for a missile that can go really far distances. Yeah, intercontinental, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So it looks like North, North Korea, if they wanted to, they could deliver a nuclear bomb to Chicago, maybe even New York. So, do you have any questions for me? Yes, I do have some questions for you. And it will be really interesting to, to know what you think about them. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the end of part one of our nuclear weapons episode. Come back in the next few days to find out what we talk about in part two. We'll discuss things like would the world be safer if every country had one nuclear weapon or if no countries had any? Thanks for joining us. Bye.